just remembering how Jenny packed all our possessions and brought a few girls, Jenny Jen and Laura, across the channel to London. Gave birth three times in a miserable cold flat. Nursed the babies, tried to keep them warm. Saw them die one by one. We have not even begun to walk. Francesca was one year old. I had to borrow three pounds to pay for her coffin. And as for Moosh, he lived for eight years. But something was wrong from the start. He had a large, handsome head, but the rest of him never grew. And the night he died, we all slept on the floor around his body till morning came. And so when Eleanor was born, we were fearful. But she was a tough little thing. A father is not supposed to have favorites among his children. But Eleanor, well, I used to say to Jenny, Eleanor is a strange child. And Jenny would reply, you expect the children of Karl Marx to be normal? <laughs> Eleanor was the youngest, the brightest. Imagine, a revolutionary at the age of eight. <laughs> That's how old she was in 1863, when Poland was in rebellion against Russian rule. And so Tussie wrote a letter. That's what we called her, Tussie. She wrote a letter to Engels about those brave little fellows in Poland, <laughs> as she called them. Oh, and at nine, she sent a letter to America, advice to your President Lincoln, telling him how to win the war against the Confederacy. Also, she smoked and drank wine. But still, she was a child. She, she would dress her dolls while sipping from a glass of wine. <laughs> and she played chess with me when she was 10, and I could not easily defeat her. Oh, and at 15, she suddenly became furious against that law about observing the Lord's Day. No activity on Sunday was permitted, so she organized Sunday evenings for the people, St. Martin's Hall. Brought musicians there to play Handel, Mozart, Beethoven. The hall was packed. 2,000 people. It was illegal. <laughs> but no one was arrested. Ah, a lesson. If uh, you are going to break the law, do it with 2,000 people. <laughs> and Mozart! <laughs> But I used to read Dante and Shakespeare and Aeschylus aloud to her and her sisters, which she loved. Her room was a Shakespeare museum. She memorized Romeo and Juliet and would have me recite over and over those, those lines of Romeo's when he sees Juliet for the first time. The brightness of her cheek would shame the stars as they light up a lamp. And her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not meant. But, uh, but Tussie was not easy to live with. Well, do you know how embarrassing it is to have a child who finds flaws in your reasoning? <laughs> yes, she, she would argue with me about my writings. Oh, for instance, my essay on the Jewish question. Not easy to understand, I admit. Well, Eleanor read it and immediately challenged me on it. Why do you single out the Jews as representatives of capitalism? They are not the only ones poisoned by commerce and greed. And I tried to tell her I, I wasn't singling out the Jews, just using them as an example. Her response was to start wearing a Jewish star. I am a Jew, she announced one day. What could I say? I shrugged my shoulders, and Eleanor said, that's a very Jewish gesture. <laughs> she could be very annoying. Well, Eleanor knew my father had converted to Christianity. It was not practical to be a Jew in Germany. Is it ever practical to be a Jew anywhere? So, and alongside her Jewish star, she wore a crucifix. No, and she was not enamored with Christianity, but with the Irish and their rebellion against England. 